hello students so today through this video i will be discussing about the ic biology specimen question paper for 2023 board examination so this paper it is actually paper 1 theory paper where maximum marks obtain 70 and they will give 3 hours time now in this question paper you will get four sections section a consists of one question having sub parts of one mark each section b consists of seven questions of two marks each section c consists of seven questions of three marks each and section d consists of three questions of five marks each internal choices have been provided in one question each in section B, section C and section D. So let's begin. Here it is the first section, section A, 20 marks. Question number one. Answer the following questions briefly. Name the type of bioreactor which provides greater surface area for oxygen transfer so the answer for this question is spurged styled tank bioreactor spurged s p a r g e d spurged styled s t i double -R, r e d styled tank t a n k tank bioreactor so the answer is spurged styled tank bioreactor question number 2 name the causative agent of genital words so here for this question answer is human papilloma virus or in short we can say hpv okay now next number three if a segment of double stranded dna has 18 percent thymine calculate the percentage of cytosine in the dna now this we need to uh, calculate that so just wait okay now we have to calculate so they have given the information that thymine is equal to 18 percent now according to chargaff's rule according to chargaff's rule t is equal to a t is equal to a that means here t is 18 percent that means a is also 18 percent a is here also 18 percent so both combinedly forming 36 percent of dna 36 percent of dna okay so the rest 100 minus 36 100 minus 36 is equal to 64 which will be contributing by so this 64 percent will be con contributing by guanine and cytosine so guanine g is equal to c again according to chargaff's rule so that means 64 by 2 the half part of it it will be covered by cytosine and half part it will be covered by guanine so here the answer you will get 32 percent 32 percent so the correct answer for this question is 32 percent so if a segment of double stranded dna has 18 percent thymine so here in this case a adenine is also 18 percent so they ask mainly to calculate the percentage of cytosine so cytosine and guanine combinedly form 64 percent of this double stranded dna so half part of 64 percent that means 32 percent it will be contributing by cytosine so this way we can calculate the percentage of cytosine in the dna so here the answer is 32 percent Now move to the next question okay the next question is given a woman has normal vision but her father is colorblind 
if she marries a color blind man what is the probability of her son being color blind so here the uh, in case of women it is indicating that the woman has normal vision but her father is color blind that means that woman she is carrier okay as her father was is color blind so in this case the woman that means woman xx chromosome she is carrier she is having normal vision okay so phenotypically she is normal but genotypically she is having that defective gene okay that defective gene it mainly came from her father because her father is color blind so woman has normal vision and genotypically she is actually carrier now the question they asked mainly that a woman has color uh, normal vision but her father is color blind if she marries a color blind man now if she marries so here it is cross if she marries a color blind man so color blind man here genotypically will express x dot y so dot here is indicating about the defectiveness and here the defectiveness is color blindness so here x dot x for omen and x dot y for color blind men now we have to separate the gametes so that omen will producing will be producing the x dot containing egg or ova or simple x containing ova here for this male that male body which is actually color blind man so it will be creating x dot containing sperm or y containing sperm so we have to cross this so here x uh, you, you, you need to make the uh, punnett square here just to make a punnett square just wait so make the punnett square here so here i am making the punnett square and in this punnett square you place the male gamete and the female gametes in place the male gametes and the female gametes so this is the symbol for male and this is the symbol for female okay so in male gamete we actually got the gametes are x dot and y and in female body the gametes or egg cells are having x dot containing over or x containing over now just fuse it so here it is also x dot so x dot and x dot it will be forming x dot x dot here x dot y so x dot y x dot y here x x dot x dot x or x x dot you can write and x y and x y okay now the question they mainly asked what is the probability of our son being color blinded that means we have to observe only the sun so here it is one son this is the second son so here it is x dot y it is indicating color blind son okay and x y another one is indicating normal sun that means there is the probability that 50 percent 50 percent of the sun will be affecting in color blindness and overall it will take it will be 25 percent so overall they have not asked they actually asked what is the probability of her sun that means we have to focus on sun two out of two suns one sun is it will be affecting by color blind so i am just taking 50 percent of the sun will be affecting by color blindness so that is the answer for this question now come to the next next they mainly asked what are ramshore sites actually this question they have given from conservation topic okay biodiversity and conservation so for ramshore sites the answer is 
so convention on wetlands was signed by our government in Ramshur, which is actually in Iran on 2nd February 1971 and it came into force in 1975. It is an intergovernmental treaty among 168 contracting parties with two 186 wetland sites identified and included in Ramshaw list of wetlands of international importance and are called Ramshaw sites. So what I told convention on wetlands was signed by our government in Ramshaw, Iran on 2nd February 1971 and it came into force in 1975. It is an inter-governmental governmental, um, governmental treaty among 168 contracting parties with two 186 wetland sites identified and included in Ramshaw list of wetlands of international importance and are called Ramshaw sites. So this is the answer for Ramshaw sites. Now come to the next question. The next question is about the standing state, standing state in ecosystem. So what is the meaning of standing state in ecosystem? It is mainly asked from ecosystem topic. So standing state, it is the amount of inorganic nutrients present in the soil of ecosystem. What I said? It is the amount of inorganic nutrients present in the soil of ecosystem. Okay, and it actually differs in different ecosystems and also from one season to the other. So a higher standing state indicates good growth of producers and consumers depending on it. So the main line is standing state is the amount of inorganic nutrients present in the soil of ecosystem. This is the answer for standing state in an ecosystem. Now come to the next question. Name the toxin. Name the toxin which is responsible for causing the symptoms of malaria. So here the answer is hemozoin. The answer is hemozoin. H H E H E M O M O Z O I N Hemozoin Hemozoin This is the answer H E M O Z O I N Hemozoin and glycosyl phosphatidylinositols. Uh, okay, so the two there is two answer. One is hemozoin and another is glycosyl phosphatidyl inositols. This is the another answer. So these two toxins are mainly found and these toxins are mainly responsible for causing the symptoms of malaria. Okay. Come to the next question. Name the bond which exerts or which exist between chain A and chain B of human insulin. So actually in this question they ask about the chemical structure of human insulin where chain A and chain B is present. Now in between these two chains there is one bond is present, one chemical bond is present and the name of this chemical bond is disulfide bonds. So the disulfide bonds it mainly exist between chain A and chain B of human insulin. Now come to the question number nine. Which row is correct with respect to the features of neutrophils and B lymphocytes? So here they listed few features of neutrophils and here for B lymphocytes. So for neutrophils they have given can change shape are found in organs rather than in blood. Maybe long lived cells they are lysosomal enzymes digest bacteria. 
and full B lymphocytes that when get activated by contact with antigens kill virus infected cells and are always short lived cells and they secrete cytokines. So here in this statement neutrophil can change shape this one is correct and B lymphocytes actually B lymphocytes are mainly helping in the antibody production and that antibody for this antibody production B lymphocytes get activated by contact with antigen so these two statements are correct for neutrophils and B lymphocytes so I am taking option A this is the correct answer of this question where both the statements for neutrophils and B lymphocytes are correctly given so the answer is A okay now come to the next question question number 10 how many ova and sperms would be produced from 50 primary oocytes and 50 primary spermatocytes during gametogenesis okay now one thing you should know that each primary spermatocytes that each primary spermatocytes if we talk about the spermatocyte each primary spermatocyte uh, produces four sperms produces four sperms whereas each primary oocyte gives rise to only one ovum gives rise to only one ovum due to unequal division and the formation of polar bodies which happens for the oogenesis process so 50 primary so 50 primary oocytes 50 primary oocytes produce 1 into 50 is equal to 50 egg cell or ova but in case of spermatocyte 50 primary spermatocyte produce 50 into 4 50 into 4 that means 200 200 sperms so 200 sperms mainly formed from 50 primary spermatocytes and 50 egg cells or ova are mainly produced from 50 primary oocytes now we have to check where it is given so we getting we, are, we actually got 50 overs and 200 sperms so here in option C you can see it is given 50 over from 50 primary oocytes and 200 sperms from 50 primary spermatocytes so this option is correct Now come to the next question it is question number 11 which one of the following is a paleodromic sequence now uh, they have given four options but you should know what is the meaning of paleodromic sequence so actually in molecular biology paleodromic sequences are referred to as the sequence of nucleotides in the DNA duplex or RNA where the sequence in one strand is the same as the complementary sequence of the other strand when read from the same direction on both the strands either 5 prime to 3 prime or 3 prime to 5 prime now according to my statement if you see option C if you see option C you will get your answer that means 5 prime to 3 prime if you read G A A TTC and then in same direction 5 prime to 3 prime direction if you read again you will get the same sequence G A A T T C so here paleodromic sequence is fulfilled for option C so option C is the correct answer now question number 12 question number 12 they have given assertion reason in assertion uh, the statement mainly given energy value of biogas is lower than that of organic matter okay now reason is given biogas minimizes the chances of spread of fecal pathogens so assertion the statement which actually they have given this statement is correct and the reason uh, biogas minimizes the chances of spread of fecal this statement that means the reason statement is also correct but actually 
the reason which is given here it is not correctly explaining about assertion okay so we will take option b as our answer that means both assertion and reason are true both the statements are true but the reason which is they have given to us that reason is not correctly explained about the assertion point so we are taking option b okay now next question number 13 give one significant contribution of each of the following scientists so they have given two scientists name s cohen and h Boyer. now in one case actually s cohen that means stanley cohen and h Boyer, that means herbert Boyer. these two scientists were the first to produce a recombinant dna by joining an antibiotic resistant gene to the plasmid of salmonella typhimurium so both are actually contributed for one important uh, fact in one important phenomenon that means both were the first to produce a recombinant dna by joining an antibiotic resistant gene to the plasmid of salmonella typhimurium so for s cohen you can use this statement which i have given for HPR, H where also the same statement you can use. But as they have given these two scientists' names separately, for H where we have to use another statement or another contribution. So for H where you can specific you can write specifically that H where discovered restriction enzyme. So S Cohen, this one use the previous statement which I mainly mentioned. And for H. Boyer or for Herbert Boyer, we use he discovered restriction enzyme. And these are the contribution of these scientists in the field of biology. Okay. Now next, give a term for the following. The technique used to amplify a gene. And uh, here, um, the correct answer is PCR. That means polymerase chain reaction. B, the technique used for early diagnosis of HIV infection. For this question, the answer is ELISA test. The full form is enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Question number 15. Expand the following abbreviations. The first abbreviation is given ICSI. The full form is intracytoplasmic sperm injection intracytoplasmic sperm injection and IUCD the full form is intrauterine contraceptive device intrauterine contraceptive device okay now come to the next question question number 16 give a reason for each of the following a person with cuts and bruises following an accident is administered tetanus antitoxin. So we have to give a proper reason of this statement. So tetanus is a disease actually caused by Clostridium titani. It is a bacteria which enters the skin through cut or puncture wound. A person with cuts and bruises following an accident is thus administered tetanus antitoxin because this toxin contains antibody against the pathogen and this inactivates the pathogen. So this type of immunity which we are mainly introducing it is a type of passive immunity. Okay, So I repeat. Tetanus is a disease caused by Clostridium titani, which enters the skin through cut or puncture wound. A person with cuts and bruises following an accident is thus administered tetanus antitoxin because this toxin contains antibody against the pathogen. This activates the pathogen and this is a type of passive immunity. Next, next is given origin of life is not possible under the present atmospheric condition. 
So give a reason for this. So for that I prepared one answer here. So before the origin of life on earth, the atmospheric conditions were totally different from the present atmospheric conditions. The atmosphere was rich in hydrogen and there was no appreciable amount of oxygen. This means it was a reducing atmosphere. Under those conditions, the formation of complex organic molecules from the simple inorganic materials was possible. The same transformation is not possible now as the organic molecules formed might get oxidized as it is oxidizing atmosphere with a large amount of oxygen. Moreover, the microorganisms may also decompose the complex molecules. Therefore, abiogenesis is not possible now. According to the accepted theory of origin of life, life originated by abiogenesis and continued by biogenesis. So this is the answer for this question. Now come to section B. Question number two. How does the reproductive and child health care program run by the government benefit the society? So this one also I prepared. This is for question number two. So reproductive and child health care program tries to address all the aspects of reproductive health. This program focuses on the proper care of the child and the mother. It also promotes the proper size of contraceptives so that family size can be planned and can be limited. They have given another question in question number two, uh, optional. So write any four causes of infertility in males. So we have to mention four causes, four causes for infertility. Okay, now four causes for infertility. There are various causes of male infertility and it may include crypto cryptorchidism that is known as failure of testes to descend into scrotum this is the one reason second reason hyperthermia that means higher temperature in, in scrotal sac due to tight undergarments third blockage of vas deferens fourth alcoholism that inhibits spermatogenesis so i repeat my points so they asked for four causes of infertility in males. First, cryptorchidism, that means failure of testes to descend into scrotum. First, second, hyperthermia, that means higher temperature in scrotal sac due to tight undergarments. Third, blockage of vas deferens, and fourth, alcoholism, that inhibits spermatogenesis. So this is the this is the answer for this Roman 2. Question number 2, Roman 2. Question number 3. Question number 3. What is meant by lactational amenorrhea? Discuss the physiological mechanism which makes lactational amenorrhea a natural contraceptive method. Okay. So here the term lactational amenorrhea means absence of menstruation during the period of lactation. It is found that ovulation and menstrual cycle do not occur during the period. Mother is feeding child because prolactin hormone that stimulates milk secretion prevents ovulation by keeping low level of estrogen in the blood. So I repeat the answer for these two questions. The term lactational amenorrhea means absence of menstruation during the period of lactation. It is found that ovulation and menstrual cycle 
do not occur during the period mother is feeding child because prolactin hormone that stimulates milk secretion prevents ovulation by keeping low level of estrogen in the blood. Come to question number 4. So study the pedigree chart given below and answer the questions that follow. This is the pedigree chart. This is the first generation or you can say this is the parental generation. This is indicating the F1 generation and it is indicating the F2 generation. Okay. The circle is indicating female body. The square is indicating male body. This kind of blackening inside the square or in the circle is indicating the defectiveness that means defective male having some defectiveness and the female body along having some defectiveness okay so this black color is mainly given here it's mainly indicating us about the defectiveness okay so the first question is is the trait recessive or dominant give a reason for your answer so dominant means what that means in each generation parental generation f1 generation f2 generation okay the any that means in three generation the defective gene will be carrying but here you can see as the parents are not affected by this trait so we can say it is not dominant it is recessive and the main reason is that if you see the f1 you will get one defective uh, that means person okay here it is a defective son if you see the f2 generation we can get a defective uh, uh, woman or a defective daughter okay um, but if we observe the parental generation we will not get any defective mother or defective father so in this case we can say that this trait is not dominant it is a recessive trait second is is this trait sex linked or autosomal okay this is the second question and for that also they asked to give a proper reason for this okay so according to me it is autosomal now why because mother and father both are normal but child um, here this one uh, daughter is affected it indicates that it is autosomal trait okay so if we see in case of as the because mother and father both are normal but child is affected it is indicates that it is autosomal trait if it is a sex linked trait in this case the mother or the father will be affecting and that sex linked trait will be transmitted to the next generation but here if we observe the mother or father they are not affected they are normal so in this case actually their autosomal part is mainly transferred to the f1 generation and then the autosomal uh, trait mainly expressive mainly give the expression in the f1 or as well as in the f2 generation so in this case we can see this is autosomal trait because mother and father both are normal but child is affected it indicates it is autosomal trait so this is the answer for this question number four come to question number five the npp of a terrestrial ecosystem is 1500 kilogram per meter square per year and the respiratory loss of the ecosystem is 1200 kg per meter square per year calculate the gpp of the given ecosystem so for that you should know one calculation or one formula that npp npp is equal to gpp 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 minus minus respiration minus respiration r so npp means net primary productivity gpp means gross primary productivity minus r r stands for respiration now they have given the information about npp it is 1500 1500 
GPP we need to calculate that so keep GPP as it is minus R so R stands for respiration and for respiration they have given um, 1200 kg or 1200 I'm just writing here so in this way if we estimate the GPP we will get GPP is equal to GPP is equal to 1500 plus 1200 that means 2700 kg per meter square so this is the answer for gross primary productivity okay so for gross primary productivity we need to add NPP and with R NPP with R uh, net primary productivity plus respiration so add 1500 kg for NPP and 1200 kg for respiration and you will get 2700 kg per meter square and this is the answer for GPP Now come to the next question. Next question is mainly for uh, it is indicating the difference. It is indicating the difference. Uh, mainly they are they are asking two differences between normal body cells and cancer cell. So what is the difference between a normal body cell and cancer cells? So normal body cells divide in a regulated manner hence have a definite lifespan but cancer cells divide in an unregulated and uncontrolled manner hence lifespan is not definite this is the first point second difference normal cells undergo differentiation but cancer cells do not undergo differentiation okay so i repeat for normal cells normal cells divide in a regulated manner hence have a definite lifespan cancer cells divide in an unregulated and uncontrolled manner hence lifespan is not definite in case of normal cells uh, these cells undergo differentiation but cancer cells do not undergo differentiation so they ask for two differences so two points actually i mentioned here Next question number seven. Name the first human like hominid ancestor. And the answer for this question is Homo habilis. Homo habilis. What was its cranial capacity? 650 to 800 cc. 650 to 800 cc. So the first human like hominid ancestor was Homo habilis and cranial capacity was 650 to 800 cc. Next, name the hominid ancestor that existed about 15 MYA. What was its cranial capacity? And the answer for this question is Homo erectus. Homo erectus and cranial capacity was 750 to 1100 cc 750 to 1100 cc so for the first question homo habilis and for the second question homo erectus okay come to the next question so a person in good health visited a garden where flowers were in full bloom while returning from the garden he suddenly started sneezing and wheezing that means it is indicating about the allergic situation okay now the question they asked number one name and define the response of the person's immune system in the ever mentioned case that means what kind of immune responsiveness they are just he that person is mainly showing and that immune responsive name is 
innate or non specific or natural immunity innate or non specific or natural immunity now what is the meaning of this innate immunity is non specific natural or inborn immunity it is present since the time of birth and is acquired from mother it protects the individuals throughout life this is about innate immune responsiveness okay name the cell of the immune system okay so that means which kind of cell is mainly involved mainly involved in this kind of response and the answer is mast cells and basophils mast cells and basophils so mast cells are actually wandering macrophages mast cells are actually wandering macrophages that means one kind of monocytes and another is basophils so mast cells and basophils are mainly showing their response during this kind of immune responsiveness or this kind of immune system now the another question they actually asked along with this the type of antibody involved in this kind of response so actually it is uh, this response is mainly showing mainly for allergic reaction so during the allergic reaction the type of antibody which may be involved here it is ige ige okay immunoglobulin e ige so the type of antibody involved in this kind of response is ige okay for section c question number 9 draw a neatly labeled diagram of a microspore draw a neatly level diagram of a microspore so here you need to draw the structure of pollen grain you need to draw the structure of pollen grain and uh, pollen grain structure here you need to show you need to give the external spiny structure the exine the internal part in time and inside the microspore there are having two kind of cells one is generative nucleus two nuclei are mainly present inside the microspore one is generative nucleus and there is tube nucleus okay that generative nucleus mainly divides into two male gametes or two sperm nuclei and one germ pore part is present and during the time of germination that germ germ pore part ruptures and form the pollen tube okay so you need to draw the structure of pollen grain for this question next so question number 10 identify the diagram so identify the diagram given above so this diagram it, it is indicating simple stirred tank bioreactor simple stirred tank bioreactor so identify the diagram the diagram is mainly showing or indicating about the simple stirred tank bioreactor okay now what is the role of the part labeled a so part a where actually it is labeled it is indicating foam breaker it is indicating foam breaker um foam breaker breaks down foam that is formed during the course of a bio process and helps in smooth functioning of the bioreactor i repeat the part labeled a is indicating foam breaker it breaks down foam that is formed during the course of a bio process and helps in smooth functioning of the bioreactor okay now redraw the diagram and label any three parts so here for this question this is the actual figure of this uh, simple stirred tank bioreactor so here they have given it as a that is foam breaker already i mentioned now here in this diagram you need to add three parts any three parts so you can add here motor you can add here acid base for ph control you can add here steam for sterilization here you can also add flat bladed impeller here it is culture brooth and here it is sterile air so better you just add motor acid base for ph control and steam for sterilization this three point you can add in this diagram so that means you need to redraw along with extra three level parts
come to the next question this is the optional question of question number 10 a bacterial culture was grown on a specific culture medium containing a chromogenic substrate after some time it was observed that some colonies developed a blue colored appearance while some remained colorless briefly explain the phenomenon responsible for this observation okay now for this question for this question we have to see the blue white selection method we have to see the blue white selection method okay so you will get the answer here so selection of recombinants due to inactivation of antibiotic gene or genes is quite cumbersome because it requires simultaneous plating on two plates having different antibiotics therefore alternative selectable markers are used these differentiate recombinant plasmids from non-recombinants by the ability of later to produce color in the presence of a chromogenic substrate the recombinant dna is inserted into the coding sequence of enzyme beta galactosidase this results in the inactivation of gene for galactosidase and no enzyme is produced that is called insertional inactivation the non-recombinant enzymes without inserted foreign dna produce blue colored colonies because the enzyme beta galactosidase produced by these plasmids converts the chromogenic substrate into blue color okay so the blue color white is appeared this is the answer the non recombinant plasmids without inserted foreign dna produce blue colored colonies because the enzyme beta galactosidase produce beta uh, because the enzyme beta galactosidase produced by these plasmids converts the chromogenic substrate into blue color therefore bacteria with non recombinant plasmids produce blue colored colonies the presence of foreign DNA inserted in the same coding sequence in recombinant plasmid causes insertional inactivation. In this case, it is causes insertional inactivation of beta galactosidase gene. And the colonies of bacteria with recombinant plasmids are without blue color. So this is the answer of this question. <coughs> okay, now next question number 11 <clears throat> so question number 11 what is meant by biocontrol biocontrol is also called as biological control so biological control or biocontrol it is a natural method of pest and pathogen control involving use of viruses bacteria fungi and other insects so biocontrol means controlling by biological agents so here who are the biological agents viruses bacteria fungi or other insects so in this way what we are controlling we are controlling the pest and pathogen population okay so this is a natural method next they have added another question with this explain how trichoderma and baculovirus act as biocontrol agents so first it is asking for trichoderma so the free living fungus trichoderma is very common in the root ecosystems it is very effective in biocontrol of several plant pathogens i repeat Trichoderma is very common in the root ecosystems. It is very effective in biocontrol of several plant pathogens. What is the role of baculovirus as biocontrol agents? Baculoviruses are the virus based bioinsecticides. They infect and kill many insect pests and other arthropod pests. So this is the role of baculovirus as biocontrol agent. I repeat the point for baculovirus. Baculoviruses are the virus-based bioinsecticides. They infect and kill many insect pests and other arthropod pests. Now 
now next question number 12 question number 12 what are linked genes what are linked genes so linked genes located in the that means the genes located in the same chromosome and being inherited together are known as linked genes i repeat the genes located in the same chromosome and being inherited together are known as linked genes okay next they have asked give a schematic representation of a test cross between a white eyed female drosophila and a red eyed male drosophila so this one already i prepared you can see this so one is asking for red eyed male so for male i have written xy white eyed female for female i have written xx now red eyed trait it is actually the dominant one so that's why i have given capital w okay and for white eyed female as it is the recessive one i have written small w small w so x capital w y for red eyed male and x small w x small w for white eyed female now place the gametes in a punnett square for be but before that you need to separate the gametes from here that means one gamete is coming x w another gamete is coming y and it is the male gametes and here for from the female body female gametes are uh, coming uh, x w small w continue or x small w continue now place the gametes inside the punnett square and then do the cross we will get the offspring here inside four offspring are mainly formed okay two male body and two female body okay now here in the first case you will get x capital w x small w here x capital w x small w and the cross between these gametes x small w y and x small w y so here if you observe all females have red eye and all males have white eyed okay so all females have red eyed why red eyed you can see capital w capital w in these two cases okay although they have also small w small w with them but as capital w is the dominant one so this one is the expressive one and it is indicating red eyed so that's why all females have red eyed but here in this case no capital w is present only small w is actually reflecting and this one is only expressed so here all male have white eye this is the answer of this question alcoholic drinks are produced by fermentation but some beverages are produced through an additional process of distillation how do the distilled and undistilled alcoholic beverages dip differ in their quality and composition explain by giving one example each for a distilled alcoholic beverage and an undistilled alcoholic beverage so here for this question we need to know the difference between these distilled and undistilled drinks so undistilled alcoholic drinks are those which have had little or nothing done to them past the fermentation process during the fermentation process bacteria or yeast chemically convert sugar and starches into ethanol wine and beer are the oldest forms of undistilled alcoholic drinks these are the examples actually with wine being made from fermented grapes and beer from barley wheat and other types of grain so this is about undistilled alcoholic drinks and the examples you can put there wine and beer for distilled alcoholic drinks go through a further process after the fermentation stage the distillation process concentrates the alcohol content of fermented drinks by removing water and other components making them stronger all forms of liquor and spirits these are the examples are distilled alcohol and typically have higher alcohol by volume and alcohol proof than undistilled alcohols so this is these are the differences between the undistilled alcoholic drinks 
and distilled alcoholic drinks. Example for undistilled alcoholic drinks are wine and beer. An example for distilled alcoholic drinks are all forms of liquor and spirits. Now consider the question number 4. Consider the situation where a variety of birds depend upon a big tree for their survival. The birds in turn are hosts for the different parasites surviving on them. Draw a pyramid of number to represent the above situation. Okay. Now for this we need to construct an inverted pyramid. Okay. And that means producer the green tree any kind of tree so here the birds are mainly living these are uh, indicating the herbivores they are mainly obtaining food from that tree and these birds they are the host body for other parasites so lice and bugs here i have taken as parasites and above these parasites the hyper parasites are also growing okay so this way if you want to construct the pyramid it will be converting into an inverted pyramid so inverted pyramid of number in parasitic food chain because so it is indicating a parasitic food chain and this way you need to draw the pyramid okay now next next question is explain any three ex situ methods of conservation of biodiversity So this question they mainly asked from biodiversity and conservation and there are two kind of conservation methods one is called in situ and another is called ex situ so they actually given here ex situ conservation methods and they mainly asked for three any three ex situ methods so i am taking here some uh, mainly three ex situ methods number one we can take sacred plants some endangered species of plants have been given the status of sacred plants these are grown in homes villages and religious places example holy basil that means tulsi okay second method home gardens a number of useful but endangered plants are grown in home gardens okay um, like aloe vera garden thyme ajwine tulsi like that then we can also use the off-site collections off-site collections by botanical gardens or through zoological parks so botanical gardens all modern botanical gardens are equipped with seed gene banks tissue culture labs and techniques for storing and growing germ plasm zoological park there are more than 800 professionally managed zoos zoological parks and wildlife safari parks inhibiting more than 3000 species of birds mammals and reptiles and amphibians and some zoological parks also have resources for captive breeding which help to restore critically endangered species so you can use these three points for that so first i i told about the sacred plants second home gardens and third off-site collections there are many more points up there like um, gene banks also you can take tissue culture you can also take and you can also take cryopreservation these are also under the ex situ methods okay now come to question number 16 for question number 16 they have given one diagram so observe the given diagram of a uh, typical embryo sac um, in angiosperms and answer the following questions so first identify the parts level 1 2 3 and 4 so part 1 is actually indicating antipodal cells okay part 2 is indicating polar nuclei or it is also called secondary nucleus part 3 is indicating central cell and part 4 is indicating X cell okay now they have given one question that define syngamy and triple fusion so define syngamy and triple fusion what is the meaning of syngamy so syngamy now i am talking about this syngamy is the fusion of one of the two male gametes with the egg nucleus to form a diploid zygote this is the meaning of syngamy that means fusion 
of male gametes with egg nucleus. What is the meaning of triple fusion? Triple fusion. Triple fusion involves fusion of second male gamete with the secondary nucleus or with two polar nuclei forming a triploid nucleus. Okay, called the primary endosperm nucleus. I repeat, triple fusion involves fusion of second male gamete with the secondary nucleus or with two polar nuclei forming a triploid nucleus 3N called the primary endosperm nucleus. Okay, how many nuclei and cells constitute the embryo sac? So how many nuclei are there? There are eight nuclei. Eight nuclei. And how many cells are there? There are seven cells are mainly present inside the embryo sac. So eight nuclei and seven cells constitute an embryo sac. Okay. Next, give one point on the significance of double fertilization. So it that means double fertilization ensures formation of endosperm only when the egg has been fertilized and embryo development is just to start. So I am taking one important significance. I repeat, double fertilization ensures formation of endosperm only when the egg has been fertilized and embryo development is just to start. Come to next question in Roman 2, question number 16, Roman 2. Okay, here it is mainly given from a reproductive health chapter. A couple was expecting their child and visited a doctor for routine checkup. They came to know that fetus was suffering from an incurable disorder. The doctor advised them to go for MTP. What is the full form of MTP? The full form of MTP is medical termination of pregnancy. In what way has the technique of MTP been misused? Now, MTP, that is uh, medical termination of pregnancy. So, Government of India legalized MTP by an act, the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act, okay, uh, to prevent unnatural maternal deaths due to unsafe abortions by untrained persons. Okay, this is the good point for MTP. But in this question, they asked how it has been, it mainly uh, MTP been misused. So MTP is generally performed after testing the sex of the fetus by amniocentesis or sonography. It resulted in large scale female feticide and complications. To prevent this malpractice of female feticide, government enacted a law, prenatal diagnostic techniques. So this way, what is going there? MTP resulted in large scale female feticide and complications. This is the main misuse which is happening in India. Now, which diagnostic technique helped the doctor to detect the disorder in the embryo? And the answer for this question is amniocentesis. Amniocentesis. Next, give one similarity and one difference between between a CU7, okay, um, CU7 and LNG20. So, what is the similarity? Similarity is that both are IUDs, both are intrauterine devices. Okay, this is the similarity. Now, we need to write one difference also. So, CU7. Uh, CU7 have actually um, t include copper T actually. So these copper ions suppress sperm motility and fertilizing capacity of sperm. I repeat for CU7, the copper ions here suppress sperm motility and fertilizing capacity of sperm. But if we talk about LNG, LNG make the uterus unsuitable for implantation 
and the cervix hostile to the sperm. So I repeat again, this LNG20, it makes the uterus unsuitable for implantation and the cervix hostile to the sperm. So these two points, that means one one point for difference. And similarity is that both are IOTs, intrauterine devices. Question number 17. Explain the species area relationship with the help of a graph. Give its mathematical expression also. So this is the species area relationship. While exploring the South American jungles, German naturalist and geographer Alexander von Humboldt observed that within any region, the species richness increases with the increase in area but up to certain limit. For a wide variety of organisms like vascular plants, birds, bats and freshwater fishes, this relationship appears as a rectangular hyperbola and on a logarithmic scale, it forms a straight line. So this is the graphical representation of species area relationship. This one you need to draw along with the equation. So log s is equal to log c plus z log a where s means species richness, a means area, z means slope of the line, that means regression coefficient, and c means y-intercept. Okay, so up to that much you can use for this uh, species area relationship. So you need to give the graph, you need to explain up to that. That's much enough. Then next. Next is mainly asking again from one topic that is uh, rivet popper hypothesis. So rivet popper hypothesis. It is mainly asked from biodiversity and its conservation. So Paul Elric, the name of the scientist. Paul Elric of Stanford proposed rivet popper hypothesis for the effect of decrease in biodiversity on the ecosystem. An aeroplane has thousands of rivets. Rivets means species. Removal of rivets by passengers may not affect the safety of flight initially. But as more and more rivets are removed, the plane becomes dangerously weak over a period of time. Removal of rivets of a critical part like wing will pose a very serious immediate threat to the safety of the flight than the loss of a few rivets from the seat. In an ecosystem, various species act as rivets and role of each species is important and well defined. This is about rivet popper hypothesis which was explained by Paul Elric. Now come to the last question, question number 18. Describe the process describe the process of transcription in prokaryotes that means in bacterial cell you need to describe the process of transcription so here i am just showing you the picture or the diagram for transcription so the mechanism of transcription actually involves um, different different steps okay sequentially you need to write the steps the first step is about the activation of ribonucleotides second step is about the recognition of promoter region and it is mainly recognized in a promoter site by sigma factor of RNA polymerase then exposure of DNA bases the part where the replication will be starting that part of the DNA become exposed okay and binding of RNA polymerase to that promoter site on DNA then exposure of DNA bases and initiation of transcription. So initiation it will be starting. Initiation means the beginning of the transcription process. Okay, initiation. Then uh, base pairing. So the base pairing method it will be done by RNA polymerase. Conversion of ribonucleotide triphosphate to ribonucleoside monophosphate. 
then formation elongation of RNA polynucleotide chain so here the elongation is showing in the second diagram okay so the strand of the DNA which will be using to form the RNA that's over that DNA strand will be known as template strand so by focusing by following the template strand of the DNA the mRNA will be formed the first initiation it was triggered by the promoter site which was recognized by sigma factor of RNA polymerase and by the RNA polymerase only okay the nucleotide base pairs are mainly placed or designed and then it mainly extends the strand of RNA which mainly performed in elongation process and in termination process termination happens when the nonsense codons are mainly coming in the process okay so in this case when it come it mainly terminated by another factor of RNA polymerase that is called rho factor and the rho factor it mainly splits the formed RNA from the DNA so that part of RNA which mainly transcribed from the template DNA so that mainly comes out from there and this way we are getting the mRNA and the formation of mRNA from the DNA is called the termination although the DNA which may, which was exposed that part was again reformed okay by the activity of the enzyme so this way in through the process of initiation um, that mainly by the uh, inactive that means by the promoter side recognition by the sigma factor of RNA polymerase second through elongation through the that means formation of the nucleotide base pairs over the template strands of the DNA okay by RNA polymerase enzyme and by the third process termination where the nonsense codons mainly stopped the process of transcription and it was mainly triggered by rho factor of RNA polymerase and finally RNA transcript or mainly comes out from the template DNA part and the exposed part of the DNA again refilled so this way transcription process mainly happens so this is about the solution or the answer which mainly I covered today here for the ICSC 2023 specimen question paper so thank you for watching this video and subscribe my channel